10 games where the Platinum can be obtained in under 10 hours. What? And if you haven't seen my initial list of 10, then be sure to check that out too, even now or after this video. So let's get straight into it with the games, starting with number 1. Astro's Playroom This should be a Platinum trophy that every Platinum Hunter should have, but it's surprising how many people glossed over this fun little title and only recently went back to grab it, myself included. Astro's Playroom is a 3D platformer in which the player controls the title character Astrobot, a small robot using the DualSense controller. Developed by Japan Studios team Asobi Division and published by Sony Interactive Entertainment for the PlayStation 5, comes pre-installed on every console, serving additionally as a free tech demo for the DualSense controller. In Astro's Playroom, you'll experience and collect artifacts from old, with nods to past PlayStation hardware including the original PlayStation, PlayStation VR, PlayStation Move and many, many more. All of which you can observe in your very own PlayStation Labo, which will also be home to a number of miscellaneous trophies. PSNP has the difficulty set as a 2 out of 10, requiring a single playthrough helped by the fact that you can come and go into levels as you please, and an estimated time of 5 hours. Certainly worth adding to your collection and very possible to have a nice little freeze frame with the Platinum Trophy. Next up we have Pumpkin Jack, which is a neat little platformer created by a single developer and designer Nicholas Masonier whose name I've probably just completely butchered. Players control a spirit, revived as a pumpkin-headed man on Halloween. Together with his two companions, an owl and a crow, players guide Pumpkin Jack through various puzzles and 3D platforms to defeat humanity. Jack can engage in melee combat using various weapons, including a shovel, scythe and magic sword. While the game has a total of 126 collectibles, none of them are too difficult to find, and if you happen to miss any, you can see exactly what you are missing via the level select once the game has been completed. Adding to this, if you were to miss a single collectible at the start of a level, once that has been collected, you will not be required to finish the whole level. You can just back out and continue on to your next objective. PSNP has the difficulty as a 3 out of 10, and thanks to the level select will only require one single full playthrough. Estimated time is 6 hours and from personal experience I would say 7 to 8 depending on how good your collectible finding skill is. The next game on the list is Kandagawa Jet Girls which is a jet ski racing game focused around teams of two and their struggles being overcome by their love of racing. The story is broken up into separate arcs following 10 sets of teams and in order to earn the Platinum Trophy each one of these needs to be completed. While racing the player can also use various weapons found scattered around the racetrack in a Mario Kart style way to use to their advantage. Add a number of mini games and time trials to the Platinum, this is very achievable but will feel like a bit of a slog once a number of arcs have been completed. Not because the stories aren't different but it does feel a touch repetitive, especially as tracks get reused on a number of occasions. PSNP does not have a guide, but other sites have the difficulty at 3 out of 10 and a single playthrough being required. Estimated time is 10 hours, but this can be easily done in around 8, especially if you skip the majority of the dialogue. And I wouldn't blame you, as the story isn't the strongest part of the game. And for an added bonus, if Kandagawa Jet Girls tickles that pickle, there is also a 12 episode anime of the same name but I couldn't tell you if it's any good because I've not watched it myself yet. Next up we've got Scars Above which is a relatively short linear third person sci-fi horror shooter. This is an extremely interesting story divided into a prologue and six chapters one where actual gameplay elements are explained within the story itself versus it just being present for the convenience. 
The problem with Scars Above, and the reason why I was debating whether to include it to this list, is because of the glitchy, bugged trophies, which as things stand, are still possible to happen. Scanning resources and enemies seems to be the main issue regarding bugged trophies, with some people believing that scanning an enemy and then dying shortly after would result in the scan not being registered, but the enemy no longer able to be scanned. It is also recommended to, if possible, play through in one sitting, as there have been reports of players going back to the game after a break and some scans are no longer counted for, etc. As for the game, there is a point of no return during the final chapter, but providing that you do basic exploring rather than running from point A to B, you shouldn't miss anything, but it still might be worth keeping a guide handy at all times. PSNP has the difficulty coming in at 3 out of 10, one playthrough and an estimated time of 8 hours. Just make sure you monitor your progress, especially if attempting this Platinum in multiple sittings. Then we've got Resistance Retribution, which is a third person shooter originally made for the PSP back in 2009, but recently updated and released for PS4 and PS5 in 2024. The cinematics, gameplay and controls feel very dated and certainly could have been given better care over time, but if you're a lover of the Resistance franchise then it's certainly worth at least experiencing once. The game takes place between Resistance Fall of Man and Resistance 2, but if you played it originally on the PSP then you'll be sad to know that they have removed the 8 player multiplayer mode, although from a platinum hunting side of things that was probably for the best. Following James Grayson you'll have to use an array of weapons as you automatically duck in and out of cover while fighting off waves of Chimera and trying to save humanity. There are collectibles, but these are not needed in order to obtain the Platinum Trophy. Simply complete every level, use every gun, and make sure to use the most overpowered weapon at least 100 times. And the Platinum is very easily achievable. As of the 9th of April 2024, Ben Studios released a patch fixing the trophy for completing the final level of the game, so the Platinum, once again, is now obtainable. PSNP does not currently have a guide available at this time, but other sites state that the Platinum Trophy would be 2 out of 10 difficulty, require 1 playthrough, and that estimated time to complete is between 6 to 8 hours. Next is Undertale, and well, what can I really say about Undertale that almost every person doesn't already know? So in Undertale, you control a child named Frisk, who has fallen into the underground, a large secluded region under the surface of the earth in a 2D role playing game. Here you can make a multitude of choice which will affect the outcome of the game. You can choose whether you wish to attack every enemy you come across or you can take the pacify and subdue approach. Navigate mini bullet hell shooter attacks from enemies as you try not to let your little red heart take any damage. If successful in battle, you can earn XP and gold, and make sure you keep that gold as there is a whole host of trophies linked to the amount of gold you donate at the Dog Shrine. One of the greatest things about Undertale is the music. Some absolutely iconic pieces of music, with many being used on YouTube videos that you may have watched previously. Megalovania being probably the most infamous, and just listening to it, it's clear to see why. On PSNP, Undertale is down as a 2 out of 10 difficulty with one playthrough required, but I would recommend 2 to include an initial blind playthrough first, and each run should take you roughly 5 hours in total. Next is Stray, which is an adventure game where the player controls a stray cat that's fell into a walled city populated by robots, machines and mutant bacteria. Through a third person perspective on a quest to return to the surface with the help of a drone companion called B12, who will come in very handy, specifically with helping you understand the dialogue from the world's robots. 
initially. Stray did absolutely nothing for me when it was first announced, and I saw the first few bits of gameplay, and I'm sure it was probably the same for many, but Stray just works so well. Once I bit the bullet and brought this game, it instantly went right near the top of the most chilled out games I'd ever played, even if there are moments in the game which are far from chilled. Leaping across platforms and climbing obstacles, all while interacting with the environment in order to open up new paths for yourself, climbing buckets, operating vending machines and also overturning paint cans are the kind of activities you'll be doing while controlling your new feline friend as you work out puzzles needed in order to advance. PSNP gives Stray a difficulty of 3 out of 10, requires 2 playthroughs and the total time will be roughly 7 hours. If you have not played it yet, you will find it on sale quite often and I massively recommend picking it up and experiencing it for yourself. Next up is Jack and Daxter, The Precursor Legacy, which is a timeless classic from 2001, and one that I stupidly missed in my younger years. As an action adventure that includes elements of action, racing, and puzzle solving, it's one that is one of the few games that does every element really well. Controlling Jack, the player is tasked with collecting precursor orbs through finding them in level or completing missions and challenges for the various NPCs within the specific area. Using those precursor orbs to then unlock numerous ways to travel from location to location in order to progress with the story and collect even more orbs. Jack and Daxter The Precursor Legacy is the first of a franchise of games which include Jack 2, Jack 3 and Jack X Combat Racing along with a couple of other spin-offs, which is probably proof at how well the original did, as the other three games mentioned all take at least double the time to 100%. PSNP has Jack and Daxter at a difficulty of 4 out of 10, only requiring one playthrough and an estimated 10 hours to get that shiny platinum. The penultimate entry is Gris which is a platform adventure game developed by Nomada Studio and published by Devolver Digital. The game follows a girl called Gris who loses her voice and has to traverse a colourless landscape all while collecting stars which she can then use to overcome obstacles to proceed further or learn a new ability. Using these new abilities and solving puzzles, Gris will slowly, chapter by chapter, begin to bring colour back to the scenery until eventually gaining her voice back. With a number of collectibles that can be collected via chapter select after completing the story and a number of trophies linked to specific actions or visiting some not so hidden areas, this platinum trophy can be easily achieved by almost anybody. The art style is beautifully drawn and the music is astonishing and while Gris is not a personal favourite of mine, even I can appreciate the beauty of this game. PSNP has Gris at a 2 out of 10 difficulty, requiring one playthrough and should take you roughly 5 hours. And lastly, Goat Simulator, which is an open-ended, third-person perspective game in which the player controls a goat called Pilgor. The player is free to explore the game's world, a suburban setting, as a goat. You can jump, run, bash things and lick objects. Goat Simulator is the type of game to just switch off the brain and have fun with. PSNP has the difficulty at 5 out of 10, but that is purely down to one singular trophy, the Flatmaster. This trophy could make or break you but with a little bit of perseverance, it can be done. Or you could get lucky and beat it on the first try, as some lucky people will claim to have done. So once again, 5 out of 10 difficulty, just the one playthrough for this, and an estimated 2 hours. But that's if you're going to Goat Simulator with a guide at hand. Otherwise, you're more likely to be looking at 4 to 5 hours. So there you have it, 10 more games that can be platinumed in under 10 hours. 
And if you like the list, then be sure to check out the previous list I did and leave a like and comment letting me know if you'd like another one in the future or if you've got any, if not all, of the Platinum Trophies in this video. Be sure to subscribe as I post Platinum Trophy related content regularly and I'd love to have you in the Bomb Squad. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.